Thank you for watching this DS Systems tutorial. In this video, we'll be walking you through the setup of the Dear B2B e-commerce portal. The B2B portal provides a scalable and flexible platform that is uniquely focused on companies doing business with each other, such as manufacturers selling to distributors and wholesalers selling to retailers. You can access and set up your B2B e-commerce platform by navigating through to the integration module and selecting the B2B portal. Any portal you create will have its own overview page, displaying summary information on its sales and customers. If you have two or more portals, summary information on the combined sales and customers of these portals are shown on the All Portals page. Select the plus button to add a new portal. Here you can name your portal and also specify a unique domain name that will be used for your customers to access the portal. Note that the portal name will appear as a page title in your browser. You may have several portals for different customers, each with different distinct lists of products to sell. You can repeat this process for as many portals as you would like to add. Toggling the active button will allow you to activate and deactivate the portal. Once a portal is deactivated, your customers are no longer able to log in and browse your products. You may consider deactivating the portal during maintenance of the product listing or any other changes being implemented. You can change the domain name for your portal by selecting the Change Domain Name button where a window will appear and you can enter the new domain name. You can also configure custom domain names by selecting this link, which will redirect you to the bottom of the page. Fill in the custom domain name, upload the SSL certificate file in the PFX format required for the Microsoft IIS server, and provide the SSL certificate password. Once these parameters are entered, select the Set Custom Domain to point your B2B portal to your own custom domain. Note that any current users and invitees to the current portal before the name change will no longer be able to access the portal. You'll need to notify the users about the change and send invitations to existing users so they can access the portal using the new domain name. Once you finish adding your portal, continue with the general settings and proceed to customize your preferences. Here, choose the portal type, portal address, and contacts that will be displayed in your portal's footer. Choose the portal location, which will reflect the stock quantity in your portal, as well as where the sales will be fulfilled from. Choose the sales representative to associate to all generated sales in the portal. And then, select the status of the sales order generated by the portal as either an authorized order, quote, or an authorized invoice. Here, you can select the invoice template for invoice printing from the portal, and then choose a default revenue account. You can choose to show or hide the stock quantity of your products in the portal, as well as selecting a product family price format, which enables you to show either a range of the product prices of the product family, or simply a starting price. The product list layout changes the dimensions and volume of products displayed on each page of your portal. Selecting a price list template enables you to customize the look and feel of price lists your customers can produce independently via the portal. If allowing guest access to your portal, you'll need to select the price tier displayed to your guest users. If using Google Analytics, you can apply your tracker into the Google Analytics Tracker ID. Selecting a tag name for new products will enable you to use a tag within Deer to automatically display a new product symbol against products it's applied to. Show Extra Parameters enables you to select where you want this information to be displayed on a product page, if at all. The shipping service enables you to use either an integrated shipping service or a manual deer shipping method. Minimum order amount lets you designate a minimum value before portal orders can be processed. Selecting an RRP tier enables you to showcase the recommended retail price against the products of which you're selling. This is especially helpful for wholesaler to retailer relationships. And lastly, choose whether you want to enable your customers to only be able to view the orders they've raised via the B2B portal themselves or instead, for all orders generated against them in the past. You can continue customizing your general settings further in the advanced settings. More information, including descriptions of these advanced options, can be found in the Dear Knowledge Base. In the Follow Us section, you can specify social media platforms you use to communicate with your customers. Here, you can specify the URLs for your pages on Facebook and Twitter, among other social media platforms. These links will be added to the Follow Us section of your portal. Customers are also able to sort the products in your B2B portal based on the options defined under this section. Products can be sorted in the ascending or descending order by product name, category, brand, and price. To add a sorting option, select the plus button, then a sorting type from the list. 
Here you'll be able to give that option a name. Selecting this checkbox will specify which of these sorting orders is used by default. You may add as many sorting options as required. Next, you can set up all your shipping methods available to your customers. To add a shipping method, select plus and enter the carrier's name, amount, and mark the carrier as active. If you have added shipping carriers previously, select add all existing carriers instead, then enter the amount and mark each carrier as active. To show shipping costs on the portal, ensure that show shipping costs is enabled. You'll also need to create all payment methods available to your customers. Select the plus symbol, then enter the name and select the method type for the payment. Method types can either be cash, on account types such as money transfer, PO and credit accounts, or a payment gateway such as Stripe or PayPal. Then be sure to mark the payment as active. Note that at least one shipping method and one payment method has to be marked as active before you can use the portal. Selecting Remove Store will completely delete all sales history and portal settings entered previously. It's important to note that this option should not be used if you'd like to only temporarily disable your portal. Instead, toggle the Is Active option at the top of General Settings. Now let's move to the Appearance tab. In this section, you can begin to customize the appearance of your portal. You can start by uploading your company logo, as well as an alternative shopping cart symbol. In the next sections, you can further customize the appearance of your portal by changing the color schemes of the header, content, footer, and custom menu areas. To change the color scheme, select an option, then either enter the color's hexadecimal code or choose a color from the palette. Next, let's move to the navigation tab. In this section, you're able to further modify the appearance of your portal and help you determine how a customer browses your products. Navigation bars can be displaying either existing categories, tags, or brands, or they can be set up using a custom menu. Navigation bars for a portal are disabled by default. Horizontal and vertical bars can be used simultaneously to display categories, tags, or brands. First, select what type of data you would like to show in the horizontal or vertical navigation bars, or whether you would like to disable one or the other. To set the portal's navigation bar based on categories, tags, or brands, select the option from either navigation bar's drop-down menu. Then select Add Item to select from the category, tag, or brand for as many items as you need. The horizontal navigation bar can also be a custom menu. There are five types of menu items that can be added to a custom menu. List of products, menu item, grouped menu, link, and title. Let's take a look at how to do this. Select custom menu from among the horizontal navigation bar options. Here you can see one I've created earlier, but I'm gonna add a new menu. Select add items and enter the menu name. Then, select how you'd like it to be displayed on the menu, i.e. left, centered, or right aligned. By default, the new item will show a list of products. You can change this to a menu item, grouped menu, or a link. Select add products. Here you can select the parameters that will be used to filter the products that will appear in the menu item. You may select one or more parameters from the categories, product families, brands, tags, or individual products. Then, select OK to save the product list. For a menu item, enter the name of the menu item, then click Add Submenu Item To. Then, define the submenu item itself as a list of products, another menu item, a grouped menu, or a link. For a grouped menu, you'll be required to enter a group number and name for the grouped menu items. This will designate the column order of each of these items. Then, select a type, which can be another list of products, a title, or a link. A title is a non-selectable menu item and is always shown above the grouped menu. For example, for a grouped menu showing a list of brands, you may use a title menu item named Shop by Brands. A link is a hyperlink to a URL that opens a web page. This could be to a specific product or it could even be to a page on your website. You can use the preview button to test the custom menu layout you're building without opening the portal. Note that the menu items can be dragged and dropped into place after they've been added. A 
allowing them to be repositioned into your desired order. In addition, in case you've made a mistake when adding a menu item, you can delete the row by selecting the X button to the right. Once you're done setting up your navigation bar, select Save. There are also four types of page elements available for selection. Carousel will show a slideshow of images appearing in a sequence. Group of banners is a group of images appearing next to one another. Tabbed pane elements will create horizontal tabs that can be linked to products associated with certain tags. And menus and catalog refer to the horizontal and vertical navigation bars. We'll see how these are displayed on our live portal later in the video. By default, all of these sections are already selected for display on a portal, and the menu and catalog page element is the only one that cannot be deactivated. To deactivate a page element, uncheck the box to the right of each element. To add a page element, select Add Section. Here, you can add a name, and then select the section type. You're then able to upload images and create associated links to the elements as needed. Let's move on to the Content Page tab. Here you're able to manage various information pages that will appear on your portal footer. By default, the following content pages are already available and can be customized from this tab. Contacts, Terms and Conditions, About Us, FAQs, Privacy Policy, Our Goal, Slogan, and Login Information. To add a new content page, select Add New Section. Then add a page title and begin creating and formatting the text, table, or image content you'd like to present to your customers. The editor accepts HTML code so you can copy and paste some of the content from an existing website or edit directly in the editor. Select Save when done. If you'd like to remove any content pages from your footer, select the X icon next to the page's name in the list. Noting that login information and slogan are required and cannot be removed. Next, let's look at email templates. Here you're able to customize emails for the invitation to your portal, invoices for orders, and also reset password emails. You can edit these templates from the Email Templates tab. The editor accepts HTML code so you can copy and paste content from an existing email template, or edit directly in the editor. Once you're done editing a template, select Save. In the Catalogs tab, you're able to designate which products are available for order within the portal. Each portal can display a specific catalog of products. For example, if you maintain multiple brands, you may consider publishing products from a specific brand to a particular B2B portal associated with that brand. Use one of the available options, category, family, product tag, or brand to filter products you would like to list or delist by selecting options here. Note if no selection or search for a product is performed, then all products will be listed or delisted. In the minimum to order field, you can choose the minimum quantity purchased at the product level. Now, let's look at price lists. You can create custom price lists which customers are able to download directly from your portal. The look of your price list template can be customized under Settings, Document and Email Templates. To add a new price list, select Add New Price List, then enter a price list name. Next, you'll need to enter the brands, categories and or tags you wish the price list to include in the corresponding fields. Repeat until you've added all preferred brands, categories, and tags to the price list and select Save. You're now ready to invite customers to your portal. Use the Invitations tab to send an email invitation to individual customers or their designated sales representative for them to create an account in your portal. Customers and sales representatives must have a valid email address to receive your invitations. On the Invitations tab, all your B2B customers are listed by default. You can search for the customers or also filter the records to show only the customers that you have not invited to the portal yet. Select the customer record and then invite selected. To invite a sales rep to your B2B portal, select sales rep invitation in the invitations tab. Enter the sales rep email address, then click send the invitation. The sales rep will then be sent an invitation to sign up for the B2B portal. From here, they can make sales on behalf of any and all active customers. Alternatively, you can navigate to the Sales tab and under Search, select Customers. Then, select the customer you'd like to add to your portal. And here, you'll be able to send an invitation to any contact against the customer with an email address. You can do this by selecting the email icon next to their name. 
Your contact will then receive an email inviting them to sign up for your private B2B portal. In the future, if you've changed your mind about who has access to your portal, you can revoke that access by clicking the delete button. Lastly, the Sales tab will show you a log of all sales created by customers via the portal. The list of all sales can be filtered based on the status of the order which can be selected from the dropdown. Alternatively, you can also search for an order by typing the order number, customer name or order amount into the search box. Let's now have a quick look at how the portal will look for your customers. You can log into the B2B portal as a sales rep and place orders on behalf of your customers. Once you've logged in as a sales rep or customer, you'll see your name and the email displayed in the top right. This is followed by the My Favorites link that will open a page of your favorite products. To add a product to your list of favorites, press the star on each of the products from the catalog. Next, we have the currency of the products sold on the portal, as well as your account options and the log off function. The My Account dropdown includes several functionalities. The customer can see and add to their addresses, change their password, hide prices from the catalog, and see the list of all their orders. Customers can access the quick order and bulk order functions from here too. Quick orders enables your customers to add products to their cart from a full list or even upload a CSV file with their order contents. Bulk orders enables your customer to see all products part of a product family, i.e. products with multiple variants like size or color, and add them quickly to the order via a matrix table. The price list page will display all price lists created in the back end and also enable your customers to create their own price lists by selecting My Price List. At the top of the page, we have our logo and horizontal navigation bar. As you can see, the custom menu can be expanded into several levels. Next, we can see our carousel showing a slideshow of images appearing in a sequence. And below the carousel, we can see a group of banners created. Following that, we can see the tab elements, which are being utilized for my featured or newly arrived items. Going to the very bottom of the page, we have all the content information in the footer. Now let's take a quick look at some of our ordering functionality. Let's start by selecting a product from the page. Here, we're able to see details of the product as well as add a quantity to our cart. If your products are part of a product family, your customers will see the same variant ordering table we saw previously in the bulk order page. To check out, click on the shopping cart in the top right hand corner and you'll be taken to a checkout screen where you can review the items in your cart. The customer can leave any comments in the comment field which will be visible at the order level in Deer. Here, the customer also has the option to continue shopping, delete out of stock items, or proceed to checkout. When proceeding to checkout, the customer will need to fill in account and billing details, delivery details, as well as confirm the shipping method, payment method, and any final notes needed to confirm the order. You now see a sales task has been created, and if we select the link, we are shown a detailed order information page. If we go back to Dear Inventory, based on my settings, I can now see this order the customer has placed appearing as a pending order. Click the order to open it, and then continue to process the order to the customer by completing the fulfillment and authorizing the invoice as normal. The fulfillment status will be updated on the portal to fulfilled once the shipping tab within Deer has been authorized. Once the payment has been applied to the invoice, the customer will also see the status updated to paid. And that concludes this video on the B2B portal.